Hi and welcome to chapter 6. We're going to continue on with positioning of the foot. Let's talk about the AP foot. With the AP foot you can use your DR panel and collimate down to about a 10 by 12 or grab a 10 by 12 um, image receptor and collimate down to the skin margins of the foot. Patient will be placed supine or seated on the table with their knee flexed with the plantar surface laying on top of the cassette. You'll have a 40 inch SID. This is another one where you are going to angle about 10 degrees towards the heel. It comes down to how much their foot has an arch on it as to how much you will angle. It can be anywhere between 5 to 10 degrees. Um, 10 degrees more so if they have a high arch, less if they have a lower arch on the base of their foot. Your central ray is directed to the third metatarsal joint. You are going to collimate down to the foot. Make sure that you're cautious to not over collimate and clip the toes. KVP is anywhere between 55 to 5, um, 60 at 5, depending on if you're using DR or if you're using CR. So on average, most people will be about 60 KVP 5 mass. Here's an image of the AP foot. Again, you're centering at that third MT, and you're going to place a 10 degree angle on your tube towards the calcaneus. Um, actually, let me point out the sandbag. The purpose of the sandbag is to keep that from sliding your image receptor. So when people place their foot down, they tend to push forward and that cassette tends to slide off the table. That sandbag is there to help prevent that. So when we're evaluating our AP foot, we should have our entire foot that includes the calcaneus. You'll see a portion of that tib fib. You'll have your navicular, your cuboids, and your cuneiform your metatarsals and all of your phalanges. Um, your second to fifth metatarsals will have equal distance in between them and the bases of the first and second metatarsals will not be superimposed. So no motion, you'll have a narrow dynamic range which is a high contrast film and make sure that you have that evidence of collimation and that your marker is visible somewhere in the light field. Your oblique foot, you want to flex the knee and here's what that example that looks like. You're going to do a medial rotation, 30 to 45 degrees, central raise to the base of the third and metatarsal. You are going to use about 60 kvp at 5 mass, so the same technique as your AP. Central raise perpendicular to your image receptor. Again, it is a medial rotation so that your knee is turned in um, towards the x-ray tube. Sponges can be used in this um, with a sandbag to hold it in place if your patient is having a difficult time rotating your foot. So your oblique foot will look something like this. Marker, collimation. You need all of your calcaneus, all of those five digits. Um, so your entire foot, third to fifth metatarsals free of superimposition. So you should be able to see through each one of those. You're going to see the base of the um, metatarsal one and two. Your tuberosities and that fifth metatarsal should be seen in profile. So this is your metatarsal or metatuberosity. So your tuberosity of the base of the fifth is where a lot of fractures actually take place and you'll be able to demonstrate that on this oblique. That sinus tarsa is right here um, right above your calcaneus and you should be able to see through that. Your lateral foot is going to be done with a medial to lateral projection. So right here, medial to lateral, come through the medial side. That projection, it exits out of the lateral side. Again, um, you're going to place it on a DR plate or a 10 by 12 image receptor. Dorsiflex your foot, so you're going to pull that foot up. Support under the knee so you can place a sponge or a washcloth or towel if it needs to be. Um, so if your patient's having a difficult time holding that position, then go ahead and place something underneath the knee to help support that. Your plantar surface will be perpendicular to the image receptor. Central ray is perpendicular to your image receptor, and your central ray is going to um, come through that medial cuneiform. 65 at 5, so you're going to lose a little bit more technique in order to penetrate all the way through that foot. You'll notice on your oblique and your laterals, we no longer have the angle. The angle has been taken off, and you're shooting with perpendicular, so only the AP has the 10 degree caudal angle. 
So on your lateral foot, you should still be able to see a portion of that tib fib, your tarsal, your calcaneus, these tarsals, um, so your navicular, your cuneiform, and those cuboids superimposed. Your tarsals should be superimposed as, as well as your phalanges. You're going to collimate down, but make sure that you don't clip the heel or the toes. We also get requisitions for weight bearing. If you're doing a weight bearing foot, you do need to have your patient stand upright. Some places will have a um, bucky tray that goes down far enough in the fluoro table that you can do these, or your bucky tray on the wall will actually come all the way down, or they'll have a set of stairs that your patient can stand up on to do these. You're going to do a 15 degree posterior angle. You're going to center to the base of those metatarsals. You're going to include both feet on that image receptor. And then you're going to do a lateral the same way. So you're actually place that image receptor in between the feet. You're going to build them up on a wooden block. And you're going to take a lateral on both sides. You're centering to that third metatarsal again. If you're going to evaluate your weight bearing, you're going to have bilateral feet on the same image receptor. Your tarsal metatarsal joint spaces will be open. Um, lateral, first of the distal tib fib, soft tissues included, especially the plantar surface. Generally, we're looking to see if there's any um, arthritis um, or anything causing problems. This is a big one for um, the first digit. If we're seeing bunions, we'll do these.